Okay, good morning, good day, wherever you are. Uh, today is Chof Av, the uh, yacht site of the Rebbe's father. And what words of wisdom do we have today? From, we always start with Hayom Yom, right? So, he reads as follows. Just as with the Mitzvah to fill in, for example, there is a designated place for them on the head and the arm, and one is supposed to feel the weight of the head to fill in, and the tightness of the hand to fill in, to fill in. So too with the mitzvahs of love and fear, or love and awe of God. Point number one: We're going to talk today. Actually, it's interesting about love and fear of Hashem, and the mitzvah is you have to feel it, just like you have to feel the tefillin, the weight of the tefillin, love and fear of God. As the Rambam writes in his Sadi Hatayra, he writes the uh, halachas on the foundations of the Torah. It is a commandment to love and fear the revered and awesome God, as it is said. Love Hashem your God, and you shall fear Hashem your God. Now, the degree of fulfillment of these mitzvahs is that there be a bodily sensation, that the very flesh and the heart actually feel the love or the fear. Just as, for example, when one meets a truly devoted friend, uh, one's love of God should be so palpable that not only should he feel good and forget all the troubles that he has, but even more, there should be aroused within this person an inner, an inner, well, I can't see this word, liveliness, yeah, an inner liveliness and an inner optimism, all stemming from his cheerful mood. Well, this is good to know. This is a, me a metric, right? A litmus test for one's love of God. There has to be a feeling. And it's interesting that just to think about the details of it. An inner liveliness, it, it has to you know, pep you up a little. Yes, God is here. God, I, God is connecting with me. I'm connected with him, and I'm, I'm trustful, and I'm optimistic. As we said, optim stemming from one's cheerful mood that I'm always walking with God. That's love of God. And so, too, with the opposite, which is fear or awe of God. He is seized. This is by the lower level now we're talking about fear of God. He's seized by a great dread and fright. He feels it. He feels that he's disconnected, and he's disconnected from the source of life. So for that moment, he recalls whatever was undesirable in his thoughts, words, and deeds. The heart feels a palpable pain from his dread of punishment. And we've explained earlier in Tanya, the fear of punishment is, is not, uh, it's an organic kind of thing. What I mean by organic is that fear of Hashem is the fear of being separated from one's life force. And if one is fearful of separating from one's life force, well, the, the, consequence of, me, the consequences of that will definitely be negative. Of course, the most negative consequence of being separated from your life force is the opposite of life. And we have an expression of shoyim de evil people in their life are called not living, dead. So it's an organic thing. You separate yourself, there will be organically some consequences, just as it would be if you were to say, stop eating, and to separate yourself from taking in the things that you need to do in order to live. So that's the lower level of fear, fear of heaven. At times, now a person may experience also a higher level of fear, which is called Yiras Boishet, an overwhelming shame. And this we're going to touch on. This overwhelming shame we call shiftless, that I, how, how insignificant I am. And yet, God entrusts me particularly, and all of us, each I'm talking about, each and every one of us, with the mission of bringing him down to earth, right? And that's the mission that we have here, to make a dwelling place of Hashem in the lower world. In spite of our relative insignificance in the scheme of the vastness of all creation. So that's called Yiras Boishas uh, or Yiras Haremamus, the exalted fear, which is translated here and usually as awe, instead of fear or disconnect, awesomeness about how small I am and how great I, I, I'm able to become by fulfilling God's, God's mysteries. So I'm in awe of God's transcendent majesty. 
That's today's Hayom Yom. And it's interesting because this one is going to be obviously connected with today's Tanya. So lessons in Tanya. Page 133. 133? Yes. Yeah. Page 133, near the bottom. If you're looking at lessons in Tanya, or if you're looking at this, Lakuti Amorim, <clears throat> so it starts today in the top third of the page, 220. So more than that, it's only four lines down. Okay, so a quick review. We have a Pasuk. The Pasuk says that one, when one plants righteousness, Zereya Tzedakah, when plants, one plants righteousness, Skar Emes, the reward is truth. As it says, he gives truth to Yaakov. Titen emes Yaakov. He gives truth to Yaakov. And the Elter Rabbi asked the question, what, Yaakov didn't have truth before that? He didn't know the Torah? Of course he did. As I mentioned yesterday, he learned the Torah from his father. His father learned it from his father. And this goes all the way back uh, to Avram Avinu, and then back to Noyach, and then ultimately back to Adam Arishan. The Masorah had started already. So, but that's a Torah, a, a, a truth that one has with one's mind from learning. But there's a deeper truth. Emes Lamito is called the truth of truths. And that's a gift, as we will see, uh, by exploring another pair of gifts, which is the gifts of love and fear. This is uh, on page uh, 220, four lines down. Vihini Medais, Zois, this is known. These are Aramaic words for fear and love. There are two kinds. So just as there are two levels of truth, which we haven't explored the second level yet, the acquired truth and then the gift of truth, the acquired truth that comes from learning what's true and studying and being immersed in the Torah, and the gift we'll see. So similarly, there are two levels of fear and love. The first pair, of, of this, this first levels of these two levels of fear and two levels of love. They are born from contemplation, understanding, and knowledge of the gedulas of Hashem, of the greatness of Hashem. And from immersing oneself in those, and immersing oneself in those things, which bring you to love of God. And the fear of God. So this is intellectual love and fear. And we correspond that to intellectual truth. I learn it. And it resonates with me. And it's true. I call that truth. So I'm now learning. I'm saying Psukim de Zimra. I'm learning about how Hashem uh, has created me, as I said earlier, to be an instrument of, of bringing the world to a higher state. I'm, 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 I'm cultivating a relationship with him in a conscious way. That's called the, the first level of love. And similarly, on the other side, all the intellectual fear that, as we said, I'm pondering the fact that I'm not so aligned with Hashem and I've got areas of disconnect and I have remorse of that, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's one level of love and fear. And there are other levels of love and fear. These are levels of love and fear which come after that first contemplative, intellectual, understanding level of love and fear. Much, much, which come from a much, much higher level. And they come in a manner, they come from a gift. Like a person pleases a boss a master, a friend, and as a result of that, not in a manner of wages, but in a manner of just appreciation, the boss, the friend, gives the person a gift. So similarly, there are levels, after the levels of, of cultivated love and fear, there's a level of, these two levels are given to Hashem, given to a person from above as a gift. Meshachosu B'machamarach is written in another place on the Pasuk, Avoidis matona etn eskun hasachem. It says that the gift of priesthood 
was given to that section of the Levites who have been carved out to be priests, a gift. Which is this gift of kahuna, that the priests stand for love, and the Levim stand for gavura, chesed and gavura, kindness and gavura. It's symbolized by the fact that the, uh, the, the kahanim are all of aharon, aharon hakoyim is the embodiment of, of, of love, right? Uh, that you should be of Talmidim of Aaron Koyim, you should be of the Talmidim loving Hashem and serving Hashem, etc., etc. And the Levium, their avoid is songs. Songs are rising up from below to above, which is a Gavura. That's the Chesed is above to below, Gavura below, above, below to above. So their avoid is song. So, in other words, both of these Levium are born, you're in the tribe of, you're a son of or daughter of Levi. And kahanim are selected out, and that's a gift, so to speak, from above. Vihine, vadai enere klau. So similarly, you know, it's a certainty that there's no comparison at all being harishoynes, the love and fear that we did by contemplation, by learning. Shehein toiles hasechel, which are offspring of intellect. Hasechel anivra, offspring of created intellect. There's no comparison between those two, Lagabi Achorenus versus the latter, Shehen Bahaboris Borakshmai, which come as a gift from Hashem. Therefore, Hein Hinekuris Bashem Emes. And therefore, the latter are called true. Now, the first were not false, <laughs> but this is, if you could say, one is true, and I acquired it, I worked on it. I began, I contemplated, I meditated, I began to feel my sense of connectivity to a connection to Hashem, and that resounded, as our, as our uh, Yom Yom said, in my heart, feelings of heart. I did the same thing about acknowledging the ways in which I'm disconnected from Hashem, and that gave me a remorse, a feeling in my heart. But this, that's true, but this is a gift of truth. They're called emes because it says, The signature, the signature of Hashem, it's in the Gemara Shabbos, the signature of HaKadosh Baruch the Holy One, blessed be, is truth. This is the double truth, the truth of truths. And all the truth of creatures, in other words, that we cultivate for, our, for ourselves, through the mechanisms we just spoke about, kalei chashivi are considered like nothing kamei in front of it. What's the path? What's the way that we can walk? The derek, the pathway that we can walk to acquire this gift, this truth of Hashem. It's by awakening great mercy in front of Hashem, al on the spark of godliness which is in our soul, shehimidosol shen Yaakov, which is the mida of Yaakov. So this is what we spoke about earlier, that arousing, this was yesterday, arousing rachamim rachim, mercy on the spark of God, the nitzutz, the chelak elaka, the peace of God which is within us and within every one of us, but which is naturally covered over by the fact that we've gone through a huge tzimtzum, a huge contraction, and godliness has been concealed one level after another until we find ourselves in a world which the Zohar called yesterday, well, calls, and we mentioned it yesterday, mishka de a skin of a snake, a very thick skin which is covering over everything. Right? But the mina of truth breaks through that. You'd, and it comes through Rachim and Rachim. Rachim and Rachim is having great mercy on the spark of God, which has been covered over and which is within you. And this is the attribute of, Mer, of, of Yaakov. Yaakov is the Mida of Emes. He's calling him in other places that name Yaakov is broken up into two. Yud, Ekev. Ekev is the heel, the lowest of the low, which is where we live, in the bottom of the bottom. And he brings the Yud the highest of the high, into that. And that Yud Yaakov is also connected with Mavriach Mehakotzer El Hakotzer. The meter of truth is everywhere the same. 
uh, one uh, and, uh, and one of the tools for that, which I learned early, I'll pass on with you if you haven't heard it, is that MS is Aleph Mem Tuf, the first letter of the alphabet, the middle letter of the alphabet, Mem, and the last. It's through true and true. It's not contingent upon circumstance. Something can be true here, and then you know, ten years later, it's disproven uh, by some breakthrough in technology, or you thought this was true, and now you realize it isn't. Right, but the truth of Hashem, when we say truth is Hakadosh Baruch Hu, His signature is truth, is something which is always, everywhere, eternally true, through and through. And this corresponds. There was a beam in the base of Mikdash, min Akatsa el Akatsa. It held all the walls together, and that's the Indian truth. It holds everything together all the time, from Aleph to Tuf, from top to bottom, from beginning to end, eternally. So that's the why Yaakov is called truth from top to bottom, the yud to the heel, and horizontally from the beam which goes around around the, and calls the whole temple together. The Hainimurema Mailis, if you're looking at the vertical, Yud Akiv, the top to the bottom. So truth is true, the Reima Mailis from the highest levels, Ad Lamatamata to the lowest levels. The Hamshit Emes Hashem Laoilam. And the point is to draw this truth of Hashem down and down and down into this world, the Oilam HaShofel Hazeh, this low, low world. Bring the Yud into the heel. That's Titan Emes Leyankov. That's the eternal truth that was given as a gift to Yaakov Avinu. God knows Yaakov Avinu lived in the heel of the heel. He lived with, and then they would love him, and he went through tremendous, you know, uh, tremendous anguish throughout his entire life uh, in order to take away and Mivara, to, uh, the word Mivara means to clarify and rectify all those sparks which were buried in the negativity of Lavan. So that's Yud Ekev, to bring the Yud down the bo- in the, to the bottom, which is Emes Hashem La'olam, to bring the truth of Hashem into this La'olam HaShafal Hazet, into this low world. Achoshek, which is dark, this dark low world. Kameshikosev has written, Bechoshech, though I sit in darkness, Hashem orli. Even though I sit in darkness, Hashem is a light to me. Vezehu ki govar oleinu chastoy. And this is what it means that Hashem's kindness strengthens itself over me. Govar oleinu chastoy. Aches oirer esrachim So we said that in order to acquire this, level of truth, this truth, the truth of truth. We said that in order to do that, you need to first have the mita of rachamim rabbit. And we detached that and we explained that the great mercy, have mercy on the spark of godliness which is within you. Feel the, the pain, and if you can, or at least imagine the feeling of the pain of absolute godliness, which is resident inside you, for being totally covered and totally obscured by the vanities, or equals the vanities, equal the darkness of this world. And have pretty on that spark. We've learned this, and this is the first part of Tanya. Because that spark of godliness, which is within you, is the Shekhinah. And the Shekhinah, and, and to the extent that one doesn't start with having pity on that and mercy for that and allows oneself to remain in the darkness of the captivity of that in this world, one is ta- has allowed the Shekhinah to remain in exile. And we learned in the first part of Tanya that the opposite of that, which we're speaking about now, which begins by having per- pity on that and, ha- and having mercy on that, is the beginning of Ga'ula, because that starts to pare away and you start doing the work of one by one Paring away the layers of darkness, which we call, which we call, even though I sit in darkness, Hashem is a light to me. There's a light there, and I can peel it away, and I can peel away the darkness and find it. So, Hashem. However, this arousal of great mercy in front of Hashem to the depths of Hashem, Sorakliyas has to be gamkein beemes. It has to be in truth. And even though it may not be the truth of truth, this has to be your truth, that I am in my own way, each of us in our own way, doing the, the avoida of kindness to Hashem. There's the chesed Hashem 
by revealing him, by revealing godliness in this world. So he asked the question, how is it that through our kindness, you know, our individual avoider, how is it that through our kindness, how can we arouse that great kindness, that supernal kindness from the truth of Hashem? So he says the way to do that is following. Here he gives us, and through the rest of this parak, a very practical approach to all of this. The advice for this is Midas HaTzedakah. Here we go again. We always come back to Tzedakah. Because what is Tzedakah? Tzedakah is having mercy on someone outside of you. And you start cultivating the, the, the behavior of having mercy, which is number one, for the sake of another and not for you. And it's going out of yourself. So it minimizes your ego. It, it diminishes the I, I, I and aggrandizes the other, 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 the other one. And so that begins to pare away your pre one's preoccupation with the coverings, with the, with, the, with the garments of this world. So the mean of tzedakah, shehi midah sarachamim, which is the midah of mercy, alman delesle, midarmeh, who doesn't have anything on his own. Ahach yesurach shefolim, to enliven the spirit of those who are fallen. And through us arousing ourselves in this way, that creates an arousal from above. We have Rahmanas on others. Hashem will have Rahmanas on us. So if since the Rahmanas we have on others is going out of this self-centeredness, erasing or getting rid of the dark coverings and revealing the inner spirit. So when Hashem does that in response to us, that's revealing godliness, which we call coming out of exile, which exile is the covered overness, and into Geula, which Geula is the pairing away of all that, and the revelation of the truth which had been buried before. So the arousal from below affects an arousal from above, and it's it wakes up the sleeping ones. It's another marshal for being captive in Gullus. And it and then it, it, it awakens the slumbering ones. These are the great mercies, the chasodim elyonim, and the supernal kindnesses, anelamim, which had been concealed, and takes them out. The supernal kindnesses and supernal mercies come out of their concealment. El hagilu to revelation, and that's just pointedly from darkness to light from covering to revelation, from Gullus to Gula. And now the, there is an immersion of, and a vision of, and an exposure of this great, great light, the light in the light of lives, which is the Emes Hashem, which is the truth of Hashem, forever. Now forever it means forever, but the Oilam also means to the world, right? Oilam. Now there is a emergence of godliness and in a in a palpable way in the world. And that takes us back to our pasuk. This is the language of planting, right? What do you do? You plant the seed, you bury it in the earth, right? And that buried in the earth, we come down. We're buried in the earth. We're buried in the lowest of the low. But there's a force here underneath it all like the force in the ground that takes away when the seed rots. The seed rotting is a metaphor for us being in a state of shiftless, lowness, and arousing great mercy on us for how far away we are. And that releases a force in the ground to cause the plant to grow. That releases a force in the ground to cause our souls to emerge from the covering and to break through the earth and to reveal the godliness, which is the flower that we so in this metaphor, the flower or the vegetable, the fruit that we really are. And that's the lesson of planting. I remember with tzedakah, which is spoken about in relation to tzedakah. Uh, that's how I was turning back. Zereya tzedakah, you plant righteousness. emes, And the point of planting righteousness is to give forth, to sprout forth truth. <coughs> 
the, and the truth, which truth? The Emes Elyon, the Emes Lamiti, the truth of truth, which is true everywhere and all the time. Emes Hashem. Uvefrat, and specifically, Besedachas the Chesed Shel Emes, through the righteousness and the true kindness that we do, Shoishim Im Eretz Hakodesh, that we give to the Holy Land, the Abana Betichonim, the Hevi Yomenu, that it should be speedily reconstituted and rebuilt. Akayim, the Holy Land. Akayim Ashikosiv, to fulfill that which is written in Scripture in Tilim, Emes Me'eretz Titzma. Truth, this truth, again, the behavior from Aleph to Torah, all the same, that truth, true, through and through, Emes Le'yankov, Me'eretz Hatzema, it begins, it, it causes the land to sprout. Ayyidei Zuriya Satsadaka, through planting righteousness, Zuriya Satsadaka, planting righteousness bought in that earth, particularly in the Holy Land. And this brings forth kindness and great mercy. And there's soften, very added, added kindness and mercy. Vanilkatim and every, and gathered together, Lesaychem in the earth. And that, when we give Sudaka down here below, and particularly he's speaking about at this moment, Sudaka to Eretz HaKodesh, so that arouses great kindnesses and righteousness up above. Asafoinim, which had been hidden in Elamim and concealed. Mr. Kosov has written, I should say, Fanta Lorejo, the great kindness, he doesn't finish the sentence, uh, which you have hidden to those who fear you or those who are in awe of you. To establish it, and to keep it established. And this is what is written in the Pasuk in Yeshiyahu. It says, with righteousness, meaning with sadaka, which means putting yourself aside and serving and, and looking to for the benefit of the other, you will be established. And the you here goes on, Knesset Sror, the Jewish people. And it also goes on the source of the Jewish people above, which is the Shekhinah. And the Shekhinah, therefore, Shekhinah that had been in Gullus now comes out of Gullus into Gaulim. That's today's time. Mm -hmm. Tess, uh, questions, comments? So I, I have a question. Just... Yeah. I know the other day, I think it was Friday, that you were mention, mentioning that Sadaka isn't just money. Is he just describing money in this, or is or is it something in addition? Yeah, here in, in the last part, he's talking about giving money for the Holy Land. That's for sure. Uh, but but in the in the earlier part, we were talking about giving about Sadaka, acts of kindness, giving to the way it's expressed, giving to one who has who doesn't have. There, we can be more broad because giving is not only giving money. But at the end here, it's talking about, you know, we have a pushka. It's designed for the Holy Land. But they're one and the same. And because he explained in a way back about, so what, what, the act of giving a coin, he explained it this way, that um, how do you get that coin? You get that coin by putting your kishkas into your work and you get a paycheck or you develop a business, right? So you put your kishkas into, into it in order to get it. So every coin you give is giving away part of your own kishkas, part of your own self. So, so that's how we broaden it into a selfless act. Now, any selfless act is, you know, is in the same bucket as Sadaka. But here it's about particularly about giving money. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So, um, okay. hello. Yeah. So it seems that Tadaka generates spiritual light from Hashem. Yes. Lord says, the Tadaka, the great mercy you have down here on your Nefesh Elakis. And on others, it says it brings forth great kindnesses and great mercy from Hashem up above. Yep. 
And the words, Ki Hashem only, I sit in darkness, is talking about spiritual darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God talking will about be the... my light in the merit of tzedakah. You're right, he's not talking about the light bulb burned out. You're right, he's talking about spiritual darkness. Which is, by the way, a natural thing, as I said earlier, at least I alluded to it very briefly. That's the way it is, because we we live in the bottom of the Simpson. Does that language mean everything, anything to everybody? The bottom of the Simpson? Anybody doesn't get that? Nobody's saying no. So, right, from the highest to the lowest, it's more and more contractedness of the of the of the illumination of godliness uh, in order that things can become more and more physicalized ultimately physicalizes this lower world as i've said many times this is of all the myriad infinite worlds this is the only world that's physical and that to make physical out of spiritual you have to really do a trick which is called simsum you, no matter how much you'll condense spiritual it'll still be just a little more spiritual little less spiritual so yeah so this darkness the lights go out in order to create the experience of something physical that feels itself to be separated yet inside of that is the essence of god himself it's because god is everywhere his essence is everywhere and so we have the tough job we thought we were worthy of this he gave us the toughest job to turn darkness into light Yes, the spiritual darkness. I, I don't know. I just want to put this forth. I don't know how other people feel about it. Um, it would seem to me that the part of giving tzedakah that's hard is that people work hard to earn money. Right. Another part of it, I, it would seem to me, is that Hashem, I don't know, Hashem put it in a nature of most people. Um, I see it like everywhere today that you people are very attached to money. Right. So giving is difficult because people are attached to it, even like it's not even so so much a logical thing. Right. But that's the whole society is a very yes. And they, could, they go together, self-centeredness and attachment, right? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, A self-centered society, it's a, 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 a society that's very attached to money. That, Like yeah. a person feels that his money is somehow his identity and giving it to tzedakah, that therefore is like a very big deal. Right. And particularly if you're used to having the kind of we don't. We take for granted that we don't even call them luxuries. You know, I've got a car. You know, I I can move about. If, if my if my anical is uh, having a bar mitzvah in Texas, I'll go right. And so these things become sort of narrow. You kind of expect this kind of thing to happen. And when it can't happen, if you're a little for kvetch from for money, God forbid, it hurts. So these things are very yeah, very intrinsically connected. The 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 acquisition of money and attachment to money and the need for money. And therefore, it's a very big deal if you can detach and give some of it away. And the Torah says you have to, because you, you have to get accustomed to negating what you're, what you're rightly calling that natural attachment that we have to all of it. It's like you have to get used to negating the clippers, other clippers, that you're used to taking for granted and having pleasure with. I would also even add that one of the things I saw in my father as a Holocaust survivor, he was, you know, he took out a good thing from the suffering of the Holocaust. And that was that he never felt attached to his money because he had seen how temporary it is. Right. So he emerged from the Holocaust with an attitude of money is to give, to do good things. There's no point in trying to amass it because it could disappear, you know. Beautiful. Like uh, people were very wealthy and 
Yeah, I mean, like go a... back and try to claim your ancestors' estate somewhere in Poland or somewhere in right and and wherever you you know yeah. it got it just disappeared. So that was his attitude. His attitude was like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use like it's always temporary. That was his attitude. Money is mm. always temporary. I'm gonna use it to do good. Right. Okay, so maybe that should be and could be our behain for today, at least one of them. That whatever has is has come to us, money, good, whatever it is, is a gift from Hashem. We know that. So, and what did he give it for, to us for? In order to be able to share it with others. So, let's do that. Anybody else have a particular behain, so what? as a result of this chapter, what to do today. Give a little tzedakah, give a little tzedakah. All right, and realize that when you're giving away, yeah, go ahead. I thought so. Uh, it just teaches us and also that you know, you said give a little tzedakah, that a person should know that every act of giving tzedakah is very powerful. Good. Sometimes that's another thing that we tell ourselves is that if I, I can't give a lot of tzedakah, what's the point of giving a little tzedakah? And I yeah. watched this beautiful speech that anybody could find where Mr. Rohr spoke uh, by one of the shluchim conventions. It absolutely boggles your mind to see him speak. Sammy Rohr. The father of George Rohr. Yeah. yeah. Because you, want to say the, was, you want to say the point while we have a minute? He was so humble in his speak. He was so, like, you could see it on him. He was just, like, he was just describing all the different monies he gave in different places but the way he was telling it over was like, just this is my purpose in life to do good. Um, and, and wherever I can, uh, another Sefer Torah, wherever I can, another Chabad house. But you could see that he was not, he was just humble. Uh, I, you, have, um, um, you have to experience it to see his humility. Here's a man, he's like worth millions. And he's okay. talking like, like he's your grandfather. Okay, so we'll leave that and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Great, thank you so much. Bye-bye.